Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life and welcome to this weekend's Prisoner Reviews. Now in this video, I am going to be reviewing Prisoner Cell Block H episode 21, Wonky Warner. So, Doreen is back in Wentworth Detention Center after a lengthy dramatic time on the run and Doreen blames Karen Travis for Frankie's death and she ended up attacking her at the end of the last episode. Now, Doreen has also gone through a total personality change which continues on into this episode. So Karen is given a bandage for her eye and Dr. Miller is quite concerned that Vera isn't taking this seriously. She doesn't even report the incident to Erica, Dr. Miller has to do it. And Erica isn't pleased that Vera isn't reporting these incidents to her and basically gives her a warning. So Doreen goes around the prison with this tough new image. It's almost as if she's become the new Frankie Doyle, but she's not as scary, let's be honest. It's quite clear to me that Doreen is traumatized by what happened and of course she's grieving the loss of Frankie. She's blaming the world, and she's blaming the cops and she's blaming Karen for what happened to Frankie. The world is Doreen enemy right now at least in her head and she doesn't know how to cope I mean this is just my opinion on it anyway so Doreen causes a little bit of trouble in this episode I mean there's the moment where Karen is doing a teaching class in the rec room Doreen basically comes in and gets into a scuffle with one of the women Doreen also gets into a, you know another altercation with Lynn Warner when Doreen rips out one of her vegetables this is also the episode where Doreen gives Lynn the nickname Wonk Warner. Sticking with Lynn for the moment, her dad comes down from the country to visit her and Lynn is shocked when he arrives because he tells her that you know her mum is in hospital and this is due to stress and worry that you know Lynn has put them both through and to be honest her dad was quite brutally honest with her but maybe it's what she needed he didn't turn his back on him or anything like that but he was brutally honest this of course upsets lynn and she ends up teaming up with doreen and these random background prisoners which by the way one of them ends up playing phyllis hunt who will play a background character for a long time with the occasional speaking bit before eventually becoming a more main character anyway lynn teams up with doreen and her little gang and um they basically decide that they're going to try and be the new bullies of wentworth and they try to rob some of the women's buy-ups so uh Lynn, Doreen and you know the rest of the gang they grab one of these women but Lynn makes a little bit of a pig's ear out of it and they end up losing the loot basically and Doreen grabs Lynn and tells her that she's basically piss weak and oh god it's really interesting watching Doreen and Lynn trying to act all tough and trying to become these new bullies on the block. I mean it's hilarious but at the same time I'm really enjoying watching them on screen at the moment and I'm finding it really entertaining. Let's just hope that Doreen doesn't take things too far. Lizzie was given some bad news about her last surviving brother Angus when Erica tells her that he is dying. Lizzie then just turns around and says bugger him. <laughs> God, brilliant stuff. So there is no love loss between Lizzie and brother Angus due to him never paying her back 50 quid that she once lent him, but B manages to persuade Lizzie to go and visit him on the outside because this may be the last time she ever gets to leave the prison and see the world how it's changed. So good old Lizzie goes back to Erica and tells her that she's had a bit of a change of heart and Erica decides that she will take Lizzie on the visit herself. So um. Uh, when the day arrives, Vera is then left in charge of the prison while Erica is away. But not only that, it's also the day of the visitor's justice for Barbara Davidson. Now, I totally forgot about Barbara Davidson. I mean, she's been locked away in the pound recently and the VJ is now at the prison to decide whether or not if she deserves to stay in the pound for another week. Ooh, I don't know how I would cope with a complete isolation for, you know, looking at the same four walls for a week. It would drive me nuts. 
Anyway, Barbara delivers a bit of a bombshell when Meg comes to get her for the meeting. Now, Barbara tells Meg that there is a certain officer in the prison who is only too happy to help to let the drugs into the prison. And when Meg quizzes Barbara, or basically tries to get her to elaborate, Barbara turns around and says that she's going to save it for the VJ. <laughs> oh, wow. What is Barbara about to say in this meeting? Is she about to throw Vera under the bus? Well, we'll just have to wait and see in the next episode. I do have a question though. Where the hell is Monica Ferguson? She was taken to the pound when those drugs were planted on her, but it was revealed, I think, around two episodes ago that it was indeed Barbara who planted the drugs. So where is Monica? <laughs> oh God, don't tell me they have her locked up and they've just forgotten about it. <laughs> Maybe she's there somewhere in the background and we just haven't seen her yet. I mean, who knows? I know she does pop back up again at some point. Now, this Catherine Roberts storyline, to me, I feel is going nowhere at the moment. I was so gripped when this storyline first kicked off, but it's becoming a bit of a bore now. Not much is happening. Catherine is still out on bail, still refusing to plead temporary insanity, and that's pretty much about it. We had all it in the last episode. She hasn't even gone to court yet, and I'm assuming it's got to be happening soon, maybe in the next episode, because this storyline seems to have put, you know, had the brakes put on for the moment, and I don't really know why. We had the wife of the deceased man who worked for Ken turn up, and she was trying to demand money and things, but it all seemed a bit pointless in the end when Steve Wilson just basically told her to buzz off. At least B was back in this episode because, you know, she was nowhere to be seen in episode 20. Now B does catch the news report about Catherine Roberts and about the man who raped her daughter. And B basically, you know, gives praise to Catherine for doing what she did. I have a feeling that when Catherine does end up in prison properly, she's going to become quite friendly with B. We also had a little update on Mum and Judith Ann when Mum telephones Jean Vernon and apparently life is going great for them. I have a feeling Mum is going to be popping back up in future episodes very soon. So all in all, a great episode. I definitely feel that there has been a bit of a change from the last episode because at this stage now, Prisoner has already been extended and I like the fact that we are finally seeing more of Lizzie and she's not just being used in silly comedy relief storylines. I feel we are now at the start of the next era and I just know there are some big things to come. My favourite part of this episode has to be Doreen just causing trouble around the prison. You gotta have someone being a pain in the ass to keep things action packed. My least favourite moment would have to be this Catherine Roberts storyline. I'm just gonna echo what I've already said in the video but it all seems systems go at first but now all of a sudden the brakes are on at the moment but I just hope that things start moving along in the next episode. Anyway, you know the score by now, guys. I want to hear some of your thoughts. What did you think of Doreen's transformation in this episode? Did you find it entertaining watching Lynn Warner turn into a wannabe bully? <laughs> Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments box below. Okay then, guys. Well, thank you all for watching today. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, stay safe, and I will see you all again very, very soon.